Hello. And welcome to Morning Santa's podcast with my guest, Zagri Zagrius. I've been with you six months and I still don't know how to say your name. So there's technically two <laughs> depend two pronunciations depending on which source you're coming from. If you're going from the ketchup. If you're going from the game Hades, it's uh Zagreus. Um, which is apparently the proper way, according to the Greeks. But to be fair, I don't listen to the Greeks, because Reese is Greek and Reese has bad opinions. Because they're not That's my his opinion. friend. He's not actually just I'm not hateful Greek towards people. the Greeks. Friendly yeah. hateful but, towards Reese, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> um so yeah, Zagreus in Hades is pronounced Zagreus. But the way I chose the name is from the get uh, is from the Doctor Who audio plays, um, uh, where it's pronounced Zagreus. And um, so I originally it was Zagreus, but when people are in chat, it's like, oh Zagreus, just like that. And I'm like, you're, I'll go with that one because I like that character. He's, he's a he's a oh. gothic twink, but yeah, he is. I'll go with that, uh, but I won't. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like, but if we would, you know, if, yeah. Cool. Uh, all that information went in and out my ear, so yeah. Who the heck, heck are you? Oh, uh, I don't even know. Um, I am the one and only Chesney Hawks. No, I'm Theo. I'm 25 years old. I'm autistic as shit. I'm, um, I've spent my whole life surrounded by disability. Um, my youngest sister was born, uh, with Costello syndrome and like uh, a full binder full of problems. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm experienced with disability and. I, uh, I'm so sorry that I laughed at that. Yeah, yeah, my dead sister's hilarious. My dead disabled sister is just the funny... <coughs> no, it's the fact that you're like, I'm experienced with disability, and I looked over and saw my wheelchair in, like, the camera and was like, oh, now I sound like a project. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this isn't a job interview for your carer? Yeah, I know. I was like, babe. And, <laughs> babe. And uh, basically, in case you have amnesia, I'm your boyfriend. We've been dating since December 2021, and it's uh, it's going all right. It's, it's going all right. I haven't Sorry. said anything super offensive yet. Your dad likes me. Yeah, okay. Wow, this is going to be harder than I thought. I knew this was going to be hard. But I didn't expect it to be this hard. <laughs> yet. Yes, exactly. Yet. Okay. I love how in my list of things that I have prepared, because I'm very professional, even though I did them at like 2am last night. I've started with the most awkward things first. And that's so me, like, just you throwing myself it. in the deep end. You actually finished it before 1am, so I'm proud of you. Aww. I was doing my actual work at 2am. <laughs> <laughs> Casually writing the... an article. You did the paid stuff at 2am. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even paid, it's voluntary. Not anyway, fair. the first thing on my list is how did we meet? Because I want to hear it from you, because... So, I was perfect in the whole situation of us meeting, and you won. What was that? We're breaking up, can't I? <laughs> yeah, the connection is... Oh, yeah, definitely. Um. So... Hmm. What, what happened with us meeting? What happened? Just re refresh my memory. It was six months ago. No, it wasn't. It was 12 months ago. Yeah, it was. I yeah okay I fucked that one up my bad I lose yeah. the point. <laughs> <laughs> so basically I was on Bumble mm -hmm. and Hinge, um, 
and I saw basically the thing was I saw you on Bumble and I was like holy shit you had a picture of you with David Tennant and Matt Smith and you were dressed as the doctor and I was like this she seems based as fuck <laughs> okay carry on to the part where you're a bad person uh we didn't match on bumble because you didn't find me attractive then so you lowered <laughs> your standards on hinge um and we yeah. matched and we started chatting and chat 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 and then eventually i got i didn't know how i am so fucking useless at starting conversations mm -hmm. um and continuing conversations to the point mm -hmm. where you thought i was ghosting you because i was by accident because i wasn't sure how to initiate topics and discussions it's not so much you didn't know how to initiate them. I didn't just know how to I, I, I would No, I would just like message you and you just wouldn't ever reply. Ever. Um, you know. No big I, I don't hold grudge or anything. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, and then... But basically... you did subscribe to me on Twitch. Yeah. While you didn't talk to me. Which because was a very to... weird thing. <laughs> Which I think is a very autistic thing. Because it's a way of showing I'm interested in you and yourself as a person while also showing that I am, you know, you know it's like I'm, I'm interested in you as a person and I want to stay in contact with you, but I'm not sure how to. Here's so some money. Here's money. Here's money to make you aware. I, I'm here. I exist. And it fucking worked, though. Yeah, because then you met someone else, um, uh -huh. which traumatised you a bit. Uh, a then little you bit. Broke up, and then you were like, I wonder if that guy's still available. So you checked the backup, and the backup <laughs> was still backed up. Yeah. Uh, and you asked me about Doctor <laughs> Who, because the Halloween apocalypse, which was... <sighs> Jodie Whittaker really needs better scripts. I mean... The, but the thing is, she's a li uh, her doctor's a Liverpool fan, so she kind of deserves what she gets. Mm. So yeah, and if I brought this story up thinking you looked this like the correct. bad one, no, I thought you looked like the bad one, but actually I look like the bad one. Yeah, out of you this. the autistic person. No, I didn't believe the autistic person. You should though. No. Um, but I I did kind of like a week after I broke up with my ex post in a friend group chat going would it be really shitty of me if I messaged someone that I met before I was with my ex I don't see that as shitty to be honest well you but wouldn't to... you got a girlfriend out of it mate yeah but as well I do have different views on not different views but um, different perspective perspective and views are similar but different if that makes any sense what so ever um then yeah no i get that i mean yeah yeah but basically i've got different thoughts on social acceptability mm. in regards to relationships um yeah i mean what my kind of consensus was that was if i was like emotionally over the person that i was with then there's not an issue like it's an issue if you still have like really strong feelings for someone then it's not really fair to the person you're now trying to date mm -hmm. but if you're over it then yeah do you think you were one of the people to reply with i still stand by what i said you didn't say that part you said it's not shitty you're entitled to your feelings and emotions exactly Hmm. Yes, Joel, he does have a Doctor Who tattoo. Yeah. Why do you think I love him? That's the only of my old reason. Personality. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so that was... And then we started chatting, and then we had a really long uh, Discord call at first, as our first date, as it were. I couldn't um, get rid of you. I really I wanted to get through that night, but you were we were talking and I was really liking talking, so Wait, I Wait, did I actually stop you eating? Honey, it's me, yeah. I'm so sorry. You apologise <laughs> for too much. I do. Oh, that's hilarious. 
you're looking at the reflection in your glasses, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean... Then eventually we met... Uh, we did a whole arrangement. It was like, oh, basically, because you were very worried about in-person meeting, because... Well, yeah, I hadn't left my house for, like, two and a half years. Understandable that you felt that, you know, you were worried, so... But then, uh, and I hadn't been inside anyone else's house for two and a half years. Exactly, Under that's why I said it was understandable. <laughs> so we had to get basically, I had to make sure that everything was suitable and, you know, okay for you coming over. And for some reason, you were cool with that and didn't yeah. question it. Yeah. This crazy woman that you met online asks you to clean your flat stick a swab up your nose and in my mouth don't forget my mouth <laughs> and in your mouth your mouth first though right you don't oh yeah 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 yeah. you don't like nose. put snot okay yeah just checking i just <laughs> i had this image of you putting snot in your mouth and you didn't question that you didn't think this is really crazy why the no. fuck would i do this no because like i said yeah it's like um having grown up with disability, you know, in with disabled community, and you know, my sis, you know, my youngest sister's friends were all disabled as well. Most of them were disabled. Um, you know, so she, uh, so I was quite used to being around people who were immune suppressed, and so taking a bit more extra precautions uh, when my dad was going through chemo. So it was just like basic stuff, like okay, make sure clean your hat. I mean, like I always relative like even I was before say, i feel like most people clean their hands my love i mean even pre-pandemic i was very much like right okay get it get in from work wash hands then start eating and like i was very yeah you know, i was not i was very much a um aware of so yeah i wasn't too fussed about it and... i found that so strange i still find that strange like <laughs> six months later after me going to yours and being like holy shit it's spotless and i can smell that he has literally cleaned everything i still yeah. don't understand why you did that i'm very fucking grateful that you did well you said that you were you had ocd and that yeah you were very worried about uh and vulnerable and vulnerable not, i don't just have ocd i'm also vulnerable <sighs> fucking brag about it um yeah. so yeah but just, you know, for me it wasn't a case of oh god i have to get every you know it's like oh, oh god everything has to be perfect you know and she's making me do all of this stuff and i just felt yeah yeah it was fine yeah. and i spent most of the time just being zoned out from anxiety which was great yeah and you sat on the complete opposite end of the sofa uh, you because... sat as far away from me as humanly possible until I eventually asked you if I smelled. <laughs> I remember that so vividly. Because it did get to a point where I was like, Shit, Oh god, do I stinky? Is, is something wrong? I haven't been out in ages. Have I, like, forgotten something? Like, am I wearing clothes? Yes, I'm wearing clothes. Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's, wrong? It's, it's like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Yeah. Uh... But no, you were just terrified of making me anxious. So you accidentally made me more anxious. I feel like it's a common theme with us, really, isn't it? Yeah, by yeah, in the attempt to not make people anxious, we create more anxiety. I've had many breakdowns in your in your toilet, haven't I? Oh yeah, yeah, it's like that. I mean, that, that there's a reason I installed the light inside, installed the button. Well, yeah, my first toilet breakdown at yours was. Was it your Christmas gathering? Yeah. Was that my first one, or was there one before? That sounds like the... the Because the... that was pretty close to the beginning of us meeting in person. It was, it? yeah. I mean, that was literally... You, you decided to thrust me upon I asked, strangers. I asked you if you wanted to hang out with... and If you wanted to have a Christmas party. And you were like, yeah... Yeah, because you were too worried about 
I don't that. like missing out on shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Christmas. <laughs> so I made myself go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and had a breakdown. Which was but then had massive. more of a breakdown trying to get to your toilet. It wasn't the morning. So the morning after the Christmas party. Yeah. Um, your mother I, rang you. Yeah, my mother rang me, and I was. And, and was, you said that you just hung out with some friends. Yeah. While I was lying in bed next to you. Yeah. Yeah. That well, was I a did... nice feeling. Well, I didn't exactly know how you. You know, how I you know. I'm I'm winding you up. I know you are. That's why I'm winding you up further. <laughs> you know, I think that I think you've got to remember, honey, when you start to push me, I push back, but worse. Okay. Yeah. My idol is Roger from American Dad. I will make things so much worse for comedic effect. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about um, it. See, I think my toilet breakdown just showed you what an awesome human I am and how I'm so not a mess. You know what I mean? Just like how put together I am and yeah, definitely didn't hide in there for like 30 minutes while internally screaming. It was just such a normal, normal experience. Yeah, exactly. But I am very grateful of the button that's now in your toilet. Yeah. So I uh, installed a smart home button, which, uh, when pressed, uh, silently triggers some lights in my flat um, that alert me that Mel no longer... Uh, I would like needs... to escape the bathroom, please. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to, uh, yeah, basically, I'd like to leave. I would like to leave the leave breakdown the zone. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, I kind of want a button in my toilet. To do that, yeah. Like, the amount of times I've been sat on my toilet and gone to press a button. And I'm like, oh, there's no button. Zag, Theo, whatever you want to call him. I'm trying to get T to stick. T E A, I think that's a great nickname because I, I love T. Awful. We're gonna call him T, yeah? On this channel, T. Um, so my babe T um <laughs> does a lot to sort of calm me down when I'm having my toilet freak outs or just general freak outs. His mum even had a go when I was uh at his mum's house for a family barbecue. Your mum actually did a pretty good job, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. She she was pretty good at calming me down. My mother may be awful. She's not awful, she's a wonderful lady. Anyway. <laughs> um, But Theo does a lot to, I guess, like, not even support me, but just be around me when I'm having a breakdown. Because, like, obviously when I get OCD overwhelmed and just have, like, a moment... There's nothing anyone can say or do because I'm just blah. But I don't know. Theo's quite good at preempting that and also just riding the wave with me. Even though he's a very chaotic human, <laughs> he can be very calm. So, uh, what do I do? Basically, just, well, every time I see, well, before I see you, I take a COVID test. Um, when I had friends over, I had them take COVID tests uh, if they're going to be around you because, you know, I don't want you dying. Um, I appreciate that. At work, I carry a bottle of... I mean, I carry a bottle of hand sanitizer with me everywhere now um, because, yeah, hand sanitizers... Uh, and the thing is, originally, I would have just carried like a flavorless one, but you got me these scented ones that smell and taste good. No, they don't taste good. They taste amazing, kids. No, Drink your hand sanitizer. They, they, they don't. I've accidentally got some in my mouth before. They do not taste good. Like for example, yesterday, I went to Wilco and I picked up Dettol wipes because that's your favorite. I say favorite, but that's the 
brand of um, wipe that makes you feel most comfortable being used. Yeah, because I trust that it's going to kill bacteria and viruses, even <laughs> though I'm sure other brands do. Other brands do. do the same, but, but to you, you know in your basically the OCD rules, which may not make sense to anyone else, but they make sense to you, state this product will I work I wouldn't better. necessarily say they make sense to me. Even then, you know, it's like <laughs> basically the OCD rules, which make a little bit less sense to everyone else comparatively to you. Yeah, yeah. but like, why? I guess why isn't the word, but... Why is it letter? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is a letter. Um, I, I was just going to say that you do all this so effortlessly and I don't think I've ever actually had to like ask you to do any of these things more than once. I've just like said it and you're like, yeah. Oh. And I'm not used to that. Like a lot of people in my life, obviously not my family, they're great, but you know, like people friends that live around by me like childhood friends not twitch friends because you're all amazing and i know you'd respect my boundaries but so many people don't and even at my uncle's funeral there were people that were trying to touch me <laughs> and i'm like no don't touch me please <laughs> but people don't seem to understand that in a pandemic, someone who's vulnerable and has OCD might not like that. Hmm. So why is it so easy for you and your friends, actually, to accept that? Like, why do your friends accept that? Um, well, for, for me, it's because having grown up with a sister who was immune compromised and a dad who went through chemotherapy, um basically the idea for me it was there was the instance of personal guilt I was like oh if i get if i get them sick i will feel bad yeah, obviously that I, wasn't I the that. main that wasn't the main reason i did that no, but, but it's true uh, um then that sort of passed on to my friends of they knew that it's like right theo's uh theo's dad or the uh, sister both need support right now from uh you know basically what's the best way we can support theo by doing these simple little things just yeah. washing our hands and you know making sure that if we're feeling ill not to come over that sort of you know mm. um, it's genuinely like a breath of fresh air to me because it is like <laughs> Your whole family, when I met your family, how everyone was so just normal about me. Yeah. And I know that sounds really dumb, but not only did nobody ask anything about my wheelchair, actually your sister did ask me if people had ever asked me how fast I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, not only did I not feel weird about being the wheelchair human, they also weren't like weird about touching. Like when I gave your mum her birthday present, she immediately, I could see her thought process of wanting to give me a hug and then was like, no, and then blew me a kiss. Exactly. <laughs> like I, I saw her brain go, no, I can't. <laughs> and it's like, wow, this is... Wow. This family has understanding <laughs> and yeah, acknowledgement of your requirements. Yeah, and yes, easy yeah. easy it is common decency. Yeah. But that's something a lot of people lack. A lot of people. And that's what I hugs are for, exactly. But I got to a point where I just I guess because I always feel like a burden because that's me internalized ableism and stuff that I just thought asking for 
even more requirements on top of my already like wheelchair requirements i was like damn girl how many problems do you want i was like there was a limit to how many things you could ask but there isn't mm. but i've never felt like that well speaking about you and your family what what's going on in the theo's brain box today and... or in general <laughs> not today because you'll start talking about politics <laughs> and that is not a topic for right now um but no your me your mental health your general um brain so into detail so i've recently returned to work after six months off due to mental health issues um completely unrelated to mel by the way i just want to point out yeah i am just going to say we've been together six months he was Officially. off work six months is it because of me? Nah. Eh, no, it's not. No. Doesn't stop me feeling like it is, though. It was just a terrible coincidence. Um, it was... Basically, the problem uh, with work was my old manager didn't understand my disability, and now with my new manager, I feel for the first time I have a proper understanding of my disability in the workplace because uh, i've worked at three different places and along that time my i've not had a proper understanding of my disability i don't feel at any point um until now and even then i don't feel that it's gone a hundred percent to what I've requested, uh, what I need, but I feel that it's definitely s further steps in the right direction, um, which is good. No, and it is. It's so amazing. The, uh, I just realised I had the um, air the dryer on, uh, the electric dryer on, which is warm and drying clothes, and I was like, it's really warm. Why is it warm? It's because I'm on the screen and I'm just so hot. Oh yeah, my PC needs better cooling so it's heating up. <laughs> Sorry. Basically, Carry on. So I feel there were two... I don't know because I don't want to attribute to malice what can be easily attributed to ignorance. Um, I don't know if... I would personally, from an outsider's perspective, go ignorance. Yeah, exactly. Same. But some um, of the things have felt borderline malicious. Yeah. And that's that's exactly why I'm like, it, am I being attacked right now? Am I, like... Yeah. And I mean, I, th I also find it strange that, that you, in any of your working experiences, um, nobody kind of like sat down with you at a point and was like hey i hear you're autistic let's work out what works for you and what doesn't you know what i mean like in yeah. any of your jobs to be like right let's actually work out for your brain what works because with a physical disability that's always done that's day one like i've never had a job where they haven't been like right let's go through some scenarios if we asked you to do this, what would happen? Blah, blah, blah. So I find it strange that when it comes to being autistic, everyone was like, yeah, you can figure it out yourself. You'll be fine. Exactly. It, it, it's bizarre. I don't know. Like nowadays, uh, now I'm feeling a lot better about it at work, but it's a... It's a whole thing, and I'm not too certain on, you know, what, what I need in the workplace, which is why I'm still trying to push for a proper investigation, a proper yeah support. Sorry, it's really warm in here. And, um, I mean, to be honest, like, even I don't really fully know yeah. what support I need. I know what support I need physically, because they're always really great at suggesting things for that but when it comes to mental sort of it's my ocd my poor concentration stuff like that i'm still kind of working out how to 
best work <laughs> and with my fatigue because work just kind of goes yeah just take a break and i'm like with chronic fatigue taking a break does nothing that's not helpful <laughs> i'll take a break and still be tired but thanks it's more about pacing yourself and unfortunately a lot of it is trial and error because there's no one to really talk to about figuring it out it's impossible to tell people what you need without them understanding what understanding you as a person mm. like yeah i it's yeah exactly kayla yeah. it's like that's a you problem your yeah. brain doesn't fit our standard that sounds like a you problem which mm. isn't helpful in the slightest <laughs> i mean because a lot of my physical needs like needing help uh getting to the toilet picking something up if i drop it on the floor basic things like that i can get a personal assistant at work yeah. which covers all of that and it's a fairly easy fix you know it's quite simple um and you can get that through or at least in london i don't know if it's england wide or if it's just london um through a scheme called access to work um they also do things for um like mental health stuff but i, I don't know what because i've never used them for that um but they can basically help fund uh transport getting to and from work if you're disabled and getting personal assistant if your work can't afford to pay for one and stuff like that which is amazing and i'm very grateful for that but it definitely feels that it's only geared towards physical disabilities i've lost it what did ecbc say honestly that's something that stopped me from getting any kind of diagnosis because would it really do anything to help or would i just continue to get told just deal with it yeah i mean in my personal opinion i i prefer having a diagnosis of things because even if people do just tell you to get on with it like at least you yourself can start to make sense of why your brain is making you feel this way whether the professionals agree to take it seriously or not you can do your own personal looking into it like it's just like with the diagnosis it's it's more of a oh okay this makes sense now i can go this way this way like basically i can cover my ass with different things and um, so basically it just helped me cover myself like for different things like i was like and it it doesn't explain all the issues but it helps open up the issues yeah because i mean i still the other day actually i was watching a smosh video and damien on it was saying about sorry damien. there's only anthony and ian from smosh okay new smosh Smitch. damien haas um he has ocd i didn't know he had ocd but he mentioned about how he gets stuck in these thought negative thought spirals that just consume him as he obsesses over them and i went oh shit that's to do with my ocd oh that makes so much sense <laughs> i was just like that's a weird thing my brain does but i was like no way that's to do with my ocd that makes so much sense thank you damien like it was just hearing other people just casually mention things can make such a difference as well in just working out what's going on in your head if you mm. can't get an official diagnosis because say you live in america and things cost a hell of a lot of money you're all living in america <laughs> america like, apparently we're in a musical now um, so yeah if you can i would suggest go get yourself a doctor's appointment and talk about what's going on and see if they can help you make sense of it if you can't afford it 
YouTube. I know you shouldn't self-diagnose of things, but you can self-understand. You don't have to self-diagnose. You can go, that could be what explains this, and this is a coping mechanism to help with this. It's like, this will lead... This, this is something that's currently going on. This is a this is a symptom this is something that people with this have i am not saying that i have this however that i will use the techniques that are from this for myself and then eventually if i get a diagnosis i can jump back to this yeah because the coping mechanisms will still help mm. if that makes sense <laughs> oh i managed to skip one for you i'm sorry can i go back in the list can no, I ask you no, how was no. <laughs> Can I ask you how was school? Because I completely skipped it. Primary school was awful. I had awful teachers in primary school. I was not supported anyway. I was literally told. <laughs> See, it's oh, so weird. I had a great primary school. It was secondary school that sucked. Uh, so in primary school, I was told, oh, um, no, he's just weird. He's just a bit of an oddball. It's like I mean, my teachers. Not wrong. Were my teachers nicknamed me the doctor or the little professor because all I would talk about is Doctor Who science and any facts Oh in my general. god, can I just say something? At primary school, they called me Dr. Powell. That's so weird. Like, I'm not kidding. My teachers called me Dr. Powell because I was so obsessed with medicine and science. Well, no, no, mine wasn't because of medicine and science. I, no, but it's the same, the like... That's weird, I don't like that. You don't like a lot of things about yourself. <laughs> True. Anyway, carry on, sorry. So, um, yeah, so that was... <sighs> then when I went to secondary school, I was in the highest set for everything except for physical activities Same. but the problem was yeah you got an excuse i was just lazy um then for the um the problem was that i wasn't able to be supported i didn't know how to support you know it's like and so it was just it just stressed me out the whole time of like oh god i'm like it must have been very frustrating yeah. uh, to the not point basically having... I got, because I didn't know why I couldn't cope, because I coped fine in primary school. It was secondary school that was a problem. And then on top of that, uh, Daisy was ill. Um, and so it was just like, it was the perfect storm of things going wrong for me. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, so, but then the head of SEN, uh, special education needs, left. Um, and a new one came in, who within a month of meeting me, basically during the handover procedure met me and within a month during the handover it was like hi mr and mrs nimmo can we come <laughs> in for a meeting hi i'm the head of sen yeah uh theo's yeah i'm pretty sure theo's autistic as shit it's like no I he's just like his that, dad though. What, and they, then it's but... like oh his dad's also autistic and then it's like it's it's dad you know it's just like his dad oh shit shit yeah no no okay things started getting better um my mental health however did not uh yeah. i my mental health still to this day is awful Same. um but it's less awful than it was but when i was in secondary school i um i don't really remember this but i tried to commit unalive um thank didn't you do for very the well. twitch censoring yeah didn't do well but i'm still Good. here yeah but, i mean yeah uh, but the support basically and it was a challenge and i dragged my ass through the final uh the gcses i mean the thing was as well like because i'd be working in the sen department bit uh section SEND, but you know what else like and there was um I was like, I would get on with 90% of the other people there, um, including a future guest, actually, of this podcast. Um, yes. But it's like, I didn't like 
associating with other autistic people. I didn't like associating with other disabled people, like... Because... I refused. Because the thing was, it was like, oh god, I'm... I'm... You know, I was aware of what they were doing that was socially wrong. Yeah. But they weren't able to see it themselves. And that that was the thing. My parents had raised me to not like to under like they'd raised me so socially aware but at the same time that's not you know not everyone is you know it was as lucky to have great parents like mine yeah uh, like it's so common even now unfortunately that it you, the schooling experience depends on the SEMD head yeah and like when I was at secondary school, I was really lucky to have a good one. But apparently that school at the moment, not doing too great. And it's yeah. like, it's all just a lottery and it shouldn't be. If you're disabled, you should be able to have an amazing school experience regardless Either of or. who is in charge. Like, <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be dependent on that. Like other disabled Fun. people, it's like I try. I don't not like to associate. Well, I hope not. I just say. Hey. Yeah, but it's like. It, but no, it's... like genuinely, when we first started dating, I had a moment of being like, "Oh shit, I'm now a stereotype. I am dating someone with a disability, and this is what I have thought my entire life." And I was like, fuck. But then I realised that I was just internalising ableism and making a big deal out of nothing. <laughs> but it's like you grow up with these thoughts and of what should and shouldn't be. And when every single person comes up to you and goes, oh, is your partner disabled? You're so used to being like, no, that's fucking not go away but now i'm like yeah <laughs> but i should be like yeah and so what yeah what are you gonna do about it what's the problem oh are you and your partner non-disabled that's so cute <laughs> look at you two being all normal it's why i dislike the show um dating on the spectrum so that basically that show the problem I've is I've never heard of it. You're a lucky. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll watch it this weekend. Please I'm going. Please no. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna pour out two bottles of absinthe and we're gonna get absolutely hammered and watch it because basically I'll need it. It's autistic people dating show, but the problem. I with mean, it, I would assume it's as bad as Undateables, right? It's yeah, it's very much like that. It's god awful. Um, I don't like I. I uh, it's why like I joked with my friends uh, after, like when, while I was single, I was like, oh, what I could do is uh, I might enter into either Love Island or Dating on the Spectrum, one of these, and just be like, right. I was uh, gonna apply to Naked Attraction. I was down for Naked Attraction. Yeah. Like, I was down for that. <laughs> uh, sassy, like, I've noticed some disabled people on Naked Attraction. And I'm like, yes, put your disability out there and be confident about it. And it's awesome to see that. Exactly. Just normalising that people exist. Does anyone have any... Uh, questions? Men mental health questions? Disabled questions? Questions for Theo? I mean, T? Um... Questions about toilets, you know, anything. <laughs> yeah, ask away. I'm, you know, I'm an open book. Well, within problem. reason. Okay, on stream, I will, uh, within reason. Theo is an open book. I've just put some uh, padlocks on some of his pages. Can Zach set me up a bathroom, the button in your bathroom? I mean, he's so fucking wood. Yeah. The thing is, what's great about that button is that it's fully customizable to do whatever I want. Like, I can have it play music. I could have it 
play an alarm. I can do whatever I, you know, basically it's got a thousand and one options. But so what it does is literally just, um, it flashes my bedroom. There's a small light in my room. It just flashes it red and it flashes a light in the living room. It was like uh, at my birthday, Mel went to the loo and pressed the button, uh, basically, obviously, um, pressed the button and then I just went and... So I didn't have to be like, Oi, it's like, I'm stuck in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a case of, oh God, I, I, you know, it's like I'm making everybody aware. Hey, uh... Hey, I am taking a shit. I am. No, <laughs> I've never taken a shit in your toilet. No, not yet. No, like I hold it as long as I can. Like I really don't want to shit in your toilet. <laughs> yeah, mate. That that to me is just a basic bit of um, accessibility. Like uh, for example, like with the rest of my flat, like my, my whole flat is smart homed, and it like. Obviously, it's not the like truly accessible. No. But it's um, it's all flat. It's all flat, <laughs> and there's a lift. There's. Um... I'm definitely only with him because he lives somewhere yeah. accessible. Like. I mean that. Was... And he has a PS5. Yeah, I mean that was actually quite a funny thing. Like when we started talking, you were like, "Do you want to come over?" And I was like. Well, my, my, my place is accessible. Like, it's got a lift. No, but... I think it was more like I was trying to be cute and was like, oh, I would invite myself over, but like, obviously, I can't. And it's you not were accessible. Like, and I didn't realize you that you were flirting. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, 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 it's accessible. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, but it's like. You a... didn't realize I was flirting, and yet I, I did some very obvious things. Honey, it's me. I'm stupid. Come on. I made you an emote. Yeah. I bought you the most thoughtful Christmas present. That was a I, great Christmas I even had to contact the eBay seller and make them reopen their shop to get it because they had closed for the holiday season. I think you, I think what we should do is message that uh, e at the, uh, the seller this Christmas, uh, send them a card on our anniversary as a thank you. Oh my god, yes. Because I did, I sent them like such a sob story. I was like, yeah. there's this guy and I really want to impress him. Can you please let me buy one? <laughs> uh, but Sassy, you joke about it playing fart sounds. At first, Theo had it that if you held the button down, it would play fart sound. So now you're quiet. You talking to me? Yeah, now you're quiet. Talking to me? Yeah. Who are you talking? There's no one else here. You talking to me? Okay, we've reached we've reached time that means Theo needs to go eat food. No, it's that uh, I was going to taxi drive. Honey, you've seen Taxi Driver, right? Robert De Niro, Scorsese. Come on. Do I lie? <sighs> I I I've, like. <sighs> Your your dad's fucked up, right? In terms of think showing you films as a kid that you should not have seen. Right. Okay. I was like, where's this going? I love my dad. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, nothing and, like awful. Okay. Yeah. That this is where me and my dad and your dad deviate. <laughs> yeah. Like I would be shown 15s as a child. I never got showed 18s until I was about 14. I haven't seen many movies. My attention well, span is well, awful. You've seen Dune? That's a great movie. I... Yeah. You know, that's how you know I love you. Because I sat through Dune. Because I know dun, dun, dun. how much it means to you. I was like, I can do He's this. the king of all the land. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> it's the same with... Um... Lord of the Rings. I mean, well, no, but I love you. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he fell I in love. love. Like genuinely, I. Oh, my D and D character is very heavily inspired by Legolas. Thank you, everyone, very very much for joining me on this chaos that was today. 
Um, it started off very chaotic and then actually plateaued and I was quite happy about that. But thank you, Theo, Zagreus, Sagreus, Zagreus, all the pronunciations Greatest. for joining me. Um, you were a great guest. Kinda. No, you were. Um, <laughs> and I love you very much and I love everyone who watched. And I will see you all next month for the next podcast and i will see you all very soon Mwah. bye you're so bad for my brain yeah any concentration i have goes out the window we're not all immortal. Don't I mean, yes. chat and talk to me. I'm cool, not chat. Chat thinks they're cooler than me, but they don't have a voice that goes. Ah, 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 ah. Anyway, um. Can I finish my point, please? This is going to be a fun one to add up. Unlimited power! <laughs>